What is up guys, welcome back to Cage Jet MMA. We are here to discuss the top five opponents. Personally, I would like to see for Nate Diaz, of course. Nate Diaz fought last weekend at UFC 263 against Leon Edwards. Came marginally close, didn't he, to getting that knockout win in the fifth round. But, unfortunately, got the, the decision lost. But, as ever, Nate Diaz, fan's favourite, took the headlines at UFC 263 after that last flurry in the final minute. And, of course, you know, we saw the... The gamesmanship, the the everything you'd expect from a Nate Diaz fight uh, in those five rounds at UFC 263. So we went away, looked at five opponents that I thought would be perfect for Nate Diaz, who is coming off the two consecutive losses now, of course, against uh, Hawaii Mazadal and now Leon Edwards. So let's get into the top five. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, of course. Make sure to follow us at KJMA on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And let's get into it. The first one, of course, is a former foe, and it is, of course, Jorge Mazadal. That Jorge Mazadal lost um, at UFC 261, of course, against Kamaru Usman in what was a, a one way affair almost. Obviously, you know, uh, Mazadal did get finished in that fight. The first time he's been finished in over a decade. And. It showed that maybe the BMF title needs to be put up for grabs again. Of course, these two fought back at UFC 244 back in November, of course, at, uh, sorry, November 2019, back at MSG. And if you remember rightly, it got stopped by uh, the doctor's stoppage, of course. And at the end, Hawaii Mazelsdow said, we will run this one back eventually. He didn't get to baptize him. And of course, it wasn't the decision of Nate Diaz to pull out of that fight or you know, get out of fight stopped. It was on the, the doctor's accord. As we know, Nate Diaz is as game as they come and will go, you know, as long as he can. There's no quitting in the Stockton native. And I think, you know, with with him, his stock's a little bit higher right now than Jorge Mazdal is, is. Yes, recently bias comes in involved, but if you take the last two performances, Nate Diaz had a better performance, in my opinion, than Mazdal did, with all the order respect to Mazda. He had a fantastic 2019, of course, with. That, those three wins against Till, uh, Ben Askren, of course, and Nate Diaz. But two years later, Mazdal is unlikely to get a title shot, so is money fights the only options? Of course, Conor McGregor's out there should he lose at UFC 264. But Nate Diaz and Hawaii Mazdal is always going to be a fight that we can tune into and have a bit of fun with. It's always going to, you know, sell out an arena, sell out a good crowd. And of course, with this BMF title, uh, you know, Nate Diaz birthed, you could say. There's always something that makes it a little bit more exciting, a little bit more edgy. But I do think you know, this could be a potential fight. I do think we see these two again. Uh, whether it's the next fight, I'm not sure. Jaime Mazda looks like he wants to have a crack at a top five welterweight. Whether it is Leon Edwards, obviously, you know, three piece and a soda. We need to get that drama resolved inside the Octagon. Of course, those thought, but well, I say thought, they came, they had a meeting outside the Octagon back in the O2, didn't they? Uh, again, back in 2019 after that. Went against Darren Till. So, we might be looking at Hawaii Mazda, Leon Edwards. We could see him face uh, Stephen Thompson, of course, if he beats Gilbert Burns. We could see him face Gilbert Burns, of course, and obviously there's Carl Covington out there uh, also. It's time to you know, face champion if it's Kamarisman is done. But if he wants to you know, make some money, make some good money, Nate Diaz is the way to go. And Nate Diaz versus Hawaii Mazda, too, for me, is a fight that I'd be willing to tune in any day of the week. Equally, as we're going to number four, it is Tony Ferguson. Now, this one's a fight that I wanted to see at the start of the year. Obviously, Tony Ferguson had a bad 2020. He carried that on in 2021. Now, of course, with all respect, losing at 262 against Benil Darush. And I feel like Tony Ferguson's come towards the end. He never really got that big payday fight against Khabib. He didn't get to fight Connor because obviously Connor wasn't active in those in those periods where Tony Ferguson was largely successful in between 2016 and 2018, of course. You know. There's Dustin Poirier out there, Justin Gaethje we saw again uh, at the start of 2020, of course. And that was a one-sided affair. Obviously, we saw Charles Oliveira, the new UFC champion, of course. And there's a couple of fights out there. Tony Ferguson, of course. Again, you're probably looking at Poirier and McGregor at UFC 264. You're looking at Michael Chandler as potential fights. Dan Hooker's out there. But for me, two fan favourites, Nate Diaz, Tony Ferguson. The press conference alone is going to be phenomenal. Both of them fantastic jiu-jitsu specialists. Uh, fantastic on the feet. Very durable. Fighters, very uh, likable uh, fighters as well. It's one you can put on five rounds or three rounds. It sells at an arena. It does <laughs> a ridiculous amount, amount of pay per view, but it's probably not a main event on a pay per view, but definitely a co main event for five rounds. Of course, we saw 
Leon Edwards and Nate Diaz didn't have to be a title on the line for it to be a five round contest. I think Nate Diaz has that extra two rounds taxed into his contract and it, you know, gives us, you know, an extra 10 minutes of one of the, the legends of this sport, you know, regardless of their records. Uh, Nate Diaz will go into the Hall of Fame and so will Tony Ferguson and I think both of these two should step into the octagon against each other one day. It can happen at 135. I'd rather see it at 170 because I do think Tony Ferguson, you know, he's notorious for taking a lot of damage, but especially in those last 12 months, uh, he's taken a lot of damage in those three losses. You know, how he didn't snap his arm against Charles Oliveira, I don't know. Uh, Benel Durish, you know, pummeled him for three rounds in a way that we hadn't seen, obviously. Justin Gaethje, you know, was devastating against Tony Ferguson for four rounds. So, yeah, I would like to see Tony Ferguson Nate versus Nate Diaz. I said it at the start year, and I still want this fight to happen now. Both of them coming off the losses, consecutive losses as well. And for Tony Ferguson, he deserves that money fight, as we said at, uh, at the start. So, personally, Nate Diaz versus Tony Ferguson, this would be my number one pick out of the, the fight that we've got. But let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And that moves on nicely, of course, to Conor McGregor. Now, obviously, Conor McGregor's coming off the back of the loss to... Dustin Poirier in January at the UFC 257 and he's obviously got that 2 6 door rematch now this one coincides with our the pick after this as well which of course will be Dustin Poirier uh, um, but I think if Conor McGregor you know, loses this trilogy his, his time in the UFC and MMA might be you know, coming towards the end whether he wants to you know, finish the trilogy with Nate Diaz whether he wants to fight a Tony Ferguson or you know have a, a few bouts at 170 if he wants to do that. Nate Diaz is the perfect option for that fight. Um, it's interesting to see what happens if McGregor loses at 2-6 tour. Obviously, again, Poirier is the big fight. If he loses that, you, know, you don't see him getting a, a title fight at lightweight. Although, you know, it could be a Chandler or a, a Gaethje and probably get back into title contention quite, quite easily with a win off of that. But you don't really see, or personally, I don't see... And I might be proving them wrong at, uh, on July 10th. I don't see the Conor McGregor where you believe in him to get the job done. And maybe that's me not doubting him, but maybe just switching sides. Maybe uh, seeing the realisation of the, the development of Conor McGregor and due to the inactivity. Uh, we don't see a, a Conor McGregor who's probably going to be fighting for a title again. Now that could all be proving them wrong. If he goes out there and smokes Dustin Poirier, he's just guaranteed to be fighting Charles out of there. Obviously, just in case he's coming off the back of the loss. And my most likely probably going to be fighting Michael Chandler, of course. That would be a number one contender's belt. Well, Dustin Poirier could then go on and thank Nate Diaz. But for me, Conor and Nate, the trilogy is going to happen within the next 12 months. It's just whether what path McGregor goes down. And I put this in for third, just in the, in the thought process that if Conor McGregor loses, we're going to see that fight a lot, a lot quicker than... Then, if he wins, of course, it'd be interesting to see if that'd be, you know, Conor McGregor's last, last sort of bout in mixed martial arts and in the UFC. If he goes over to boxing and fights Pacquiao, maybe we don't know. But we have to, we have to settle the scores between Nate Diaz and Conor McGregor. And of course, that moves on to the other competitor in the UFC 264 uh, main event, and our, our fourth pick, and it is of course Dustin Poirier. Now, of course, Dustin Poirier fights Conor McGregor at UFC 264. He thought he's coming off an impressive win that finished at, at 2.57 in January where he, you know, the car kick was super effective. Um, he finished him, of course, in the second round and looked phen phenomenal doing it at the Diamond Poirier and he's getting the respect he, he finally deserves, of course. That being said, of course, these two were supposed to fight back at UFC 230 back in 2018, again in MSG. I believe in the 135 pounder then, but if you remember, this was meant to be the main event and then Dustin Poirier had to withdraw due to illness to the point where I think he was in hospital I believe so for me again I think this one deserves to be run back he's on a two fight win streak of course uh, he's his only loss really is to Khabib Nurmagomedov in recent times that was at the title of course but you know he's beating Max Holloway Eddie Alvarez Justin Gaethje Anthony Pettis uh, so his his resume is looking uh, well Hall of Fame worthy it's absolutely phenomenal resume that Dustin Boyer has, has put together in his career and Nate Diaz needs to be a part of that, I believe. Again, this is a fight similarly to you know, the previous opponents who can happen at 135 to 170. It settles out arenas, both of them fantastically likable people. You know, the work that Dustin Poirier does you now outside the with his charity, the Good Fight Foundation, is absolutely phenomenal. And he should 
you know, probably, well, I say he should have. He made the right decision going through this. He's going to set, you know, and secure his his family's wealth. And if he does what he did back in January, guarantee the title shot. Anyway, a lot of people originally thought Dustin Poirier should have thought uh, Charles Oliveira and Michael Chandler for the vacant lightweight title. But, you know, business is to be done. And Dustin Poirier has made the right business. But should he lose at 2 6 law? I think, again, similar to Conor McGregor, we could see that. that uh, wound with Nate Diaz reopen once again, and uh, you know obviously Dustin Poirier, I believe, has said he'd get that one back with Nate Diaz eventually, and I think uh, Nate Diaz has equally said that he'd like to fight Dustin Poirier in the future. You know, should that that fight re reemerge, and again, two six is a lot to play on, but I think the loser of two six could very much come out the winner with a money fight against Nate Diaz, and that leads us on to our final comp- opponent. And it is, of course, Wonderboy. Again, this is coming out from a point of getting a big money fight. Obviously, Wonderboy has got a fight. Gilbert Burns again at UFC 264. I'm looking at timelines of these, uh, you know, potentially losses, uh, potential losses to the last three opponents, of course. Um, but, you know, I'm looking at a December, January, maybe for Nate Diaz. He said he wanted three or four months out. But depending on what happens in July, that could, you know, very much change to a January, February, you could say. Uh, but Wonderboy. Of course, he's fighting at 264 against Gilbert Burns and what could be a number one contender's belt. Did Wonderboy win that fight? You'd definitely expect him to, you know, go on and face uh, maybe a, a Leon Edwards. Uh, a lot of people want to see him fight for the title, but it looks like Colby, uh, Colby Cumpton, sorry, is guaranteed that fighter spot. And you know, maybe you know, the way you look at it is he's coming off that win against Woodley, which was an impressive win, but you know, Woodley's stock had fallen at that point. But again, Kobe Compton versus Kamaru Usman, one of the greatest fighters I've ever seen at UFC 246, of course. Uh, 245, even, sorry. Back in December 2019. You know, the bad blood's still there between both of them. And it, it makes money. And in this era, when we've had 2020 with a lack of gates, you know, we're going to see stacked UFC cuts. We're going to see the money fights that are going to you know, really set up, you know, 15,000 to 20,000 you know, capacity arenas. We've seen it with Mazel and Usman. You know, Oliveira and Chandler was big. We've seen Adesanya fight twice, uh, one with fans and one without fans, of course. So the pay per views are getting stacked. And uh, Nate Diaz and Wonderboy, again, does fantastic business. Similar to probably how Nate Diaz and, um, and Anthony Pettis was, of course. Anthony Pettis uh, beat Wonderboy uh, via that special knockout, of course. Um, and, of course, Nate Diaz beat Anthony Pettis. So... There's a little bit of building blocks there. There's some foundations laid out there, but obviously Wonderboy's coming off two, two wins against uh, Vicente Luque and Jeff Neal. Two fantastic wins against upcoming promising world weight contenders. And at you know, 36 years of age, he's not slowing down. He's showing you know, that, that style that he's so so phenomenally you know, perfected. Um, it's fantastic. And similar to how Leon Edwards performed against Nate Diaz, you'd expect um, Wonderboy to go in there with that sort of game plan pick and Picking his shots, getting in and out very quickly, not falling to the Nate Diaz uh, book of tricks, you could say, with the, you know, with the poking the bum out, you know, with the, with the pretending to be hurt up against the cage, slowing down, and then that those flurries of strikes that Nate Diaz was throwing. But for me, Stephen Thompson, you know, he had those two fighters against Woodley. He's got a win over Jorge Mazadel, so he's he's still a big name. It's just unfortunate that he. You know, he's known as the, the nicest motherfucker. You could have the nicest motherfucker versus the, the baddest motherfucker put a title in there somewhere. <laughs> it would work um, promotionally, wouldn't it, market, uh, marketing-wise. And obviously Wonderboy deserves to go out, you know, with some money in the bank because he's put a lot of a lot of work into this game and into the sport. And he's been the top five, top six, you know, for the last oh, six, you know, five, six years, you could say, back until 205 at least. You know, he's beaten Rory McDonald, etc. So he's got a huge resume again. Nate Diaz would be a fantastic name to put towards that. And, uh, you know, Wonderboy would open for the favourite for that. And if, you know, Nate Diaz does have title opportunities or, or um, aspirations, which I don't think he does. I think he's more about securing. You no, know, he's he's a fighter. He's not a... He's someone who looks for a fight rather than looking for rewards. He wants to get to the, the people's admiration rather than the sports admiration, I believe. And obviously he's getting on a bit of it, it, it as well. So I don't think titles are in his sight. But again, if a matchup, you know, if he'd beaten Leon Edwards uh, 2-6-3, you know, a lot of people would have said, 
he could probably fight Usman in his next belt, you could say. Obviously, Edwards, the, the story was that if Edwards wins a fight, he gets a title belt. And the same would have been for Nate Diaz, I believe. And Stephen Wonderboy could still do that same thing. If Stephen Wonderboy beats <laughs> Gilbert Burns, he's probably the number one contender outside of Colby Compton. And unfortunately, maybe Leon Edwards, depending on how that result goes. Or maybe you just have to see Thompson versus uh, Rocky Edwards. In, uh, a true number one contender, is about you could say. But if he loses, Nate Diaz is definitely the path for me that I would choose to, for him to go down. But let us know your thoughts in the comments. That is my top five fights for Nate Diaz after UFC 263. Give us your predictions. Which one, you know, rank him from, rank it your top five out of this list that we made. Give us your own list as well. And make sure to hit that subscribe button, of course. Make sure to follow us at KHMA on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And I'll see you guys on the next video.